Konnichiwa YouTube, it is Heartbroken Biker and welcome to part 2 of testing the Himalayan and today we are going to do off-roads. If you guys have missed the part 1, you can check in the link below or somewhere here. That was a city ride. Right now we are doing a little bit on off-road here. What a nice morning. I am expecting some snow and rain to test ride the Royal Enfield Himalayan today. Oh, uncle! Oh, what action ki dukan? Rain and snow ka hai. Hey, dala dikh raha. Sukh gaya pura. Zara South India ka ride karo. And after this, it's gonna be complete decider of what this bike is capable of. Obviously, it is decided already in the CS Santosh testing, but this is common man testing right now. Oh no, there's no traction over there. Right, right, right. Hurry. Left, left, left. Ah, right, 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 right. So stay tuned and have fun. Enjoy it. We are just having fun on the bike so we're here to share our experiences i have a royal infield owner with me and one more off-roader who's actually helping us shoot right there first up we talk about the suspension of this bike the royal infield himalayan suspension the front and the rear yeah so the suspension track is really good it absorbs bumps on any sort of surface we've been to rocks slush mud Right, on the road the suspension felt a little stiff but over here it felt a little soft and uh, actually good to the liking that's what I would say so it's a pretty adaptable suspension I think the good thing is we did not see any man boobs flying across or even our guts jumping around with the suspension so which was good it did not take us off from our glamour I guess so looks like we will have fun on this bike and also look cool that's gonna happen even though you have a belly and sexy stuff from oh, it's pulling in <laughs> what about the foot pegs a lot of people had questions about foot pegs that people will slip off from the foot pegs by the looks of it they think it's a small foot peg what do you feel about that did, did your shoes slip you're using the army boots is it yeah they are uh, good quality army boots and uh, you must have uh, seen when we went through slush, it was uh, it was very slippery. Right. But still we could have the slush with our feet on the foot pegs. But so it did not slip off the foot peg, right? No, it did, did not slip off the foot peg. It did. Same thing with my MX boots right here. I'm wearing O'Neill MX boots and O'Neill Element MX boots and did not slip from the foot peg even though I had a ton of slush stuck underneath my boot which we took painstakingly removed the slush from both the foot peg, the legs and we had to take off the mud guard and we had to do a lot of poking around a lot of hard work to take off all the slush yeah. so yeah foot pegs are sorted i would say do not be scared about those foot pegs they are pretty solid pretty good foot pegs and i don't know how many of us are cs santos here i'm not a cs santos to have broken the foot peg in such a brutal manner that can be only done by pretty harsh off-roading i guess yeah. uh, which is not my skill at least so I think for most of us, almost all of us, I think the foot pegs will stay on. The next thing is the exhaust note. Now I think a lot of a lot of these traditional RE owners, the bullet owners, they want that thump. I think I think it sells on thump, which I personally do not like. I mean if you guys have seen my first video, I'm a RE hater, they would say. So I don't personally like that thump. This is a little throaty.
This is a little throaty, but uh, it is not consistent. When I chop it down, chop down the throttle, there's a lot of backfire that is going on. I think that can be fixed by carb tuning, but I have to see how much, how much you have to actually maintain that. How many times do you have to actually tune that in a week or in a month? If there's too much of maintenance going on, then I wouldn't be happy. But we're yet to see that. What do you feel about? I mean, as an RE owner, what do you feel about the thump? Uh, you can't expect everything from an every bike, man. I mean, it is a beautiful thump. The thump, not a thump, but what it's producing, it is beautiful. Yeah, so I guess as an RE owner, I think I can ride it. Right, yeah. but then pretty much people were complaining the same thing when the Thunderbird came out, right? Yeah. That it is not a bullet. So I, I don't understand these things, but anyway, uh, I think it's a pretty decent thump on the Himalayan. I actually hate the classic car. Sorry about it. Now this is a pretty tall bike to look at, at least, especially when it is on the center stand. Uh, it kind of intimidates me. However, it's uh, kind of fun once you take off the center stand. I think I was able to have my both feet on the ground, tippy toeing. However, I can pretty much manage, and I can actually have one feet firmly on the ground, which is not something I can do on a GS1200 or Tiger 800. So. Well, yeah, that works, and I am about 5'3. What about you, Shanmuka? I am around 5'10. So, yeah, it is pretty comfortable. And the best part is the seat height is on par. I mean, it is almost the same height as every other bike that is being sold right now. So, I don't think it is much of a difference. The seat height is pretty good, actually. Ground clearance is uh, good, as we have seen. I mean, we have uh, done quite a few off road uh, trails that are around here. Right. And uh, I don't think it's scraped anywhere. I think I scraped a little bit on the rocky surface, if you remember last step. Yeah, I think that was the uh, stand or something which scraped. So okay. I don't think it's the underbelly which scraped. It wasn't the underbelly. No, I don't so think that it's was the stand. Yeah. And I actually went through a pretty huge drop. Yeah. Next thing on the list is tire grips and braking. What do you feel? The on off road tires on these bike on this bike is uh, they are decent enough for uh, on road grip but uh, I think they do lack some bite in the proper slushy thing that we did. Right. Like we, we got stuck in the slush and uh, I think you, we can see that it didn't offer any grip. So it can be like it, the, the slush is clay slush so I think it might have happened but then uh, I would like a better, bit more uh, road grip. So this thing was gripping pretty good on the rocks when we yeah. tested it. Yeah. Even in the gravel, when it is dry, it is actually gripping pretty good. But as soon as we went through a little bit of wet mud yeah. and then back to the dry mud, it's losing out a little grip. These are CR tires, right? Yeah, CR tires. Right. So, but then again, overall, they are pretty good tires. It's yeah. not a big disappointment. It's not, it's, it's not a yeah. big disappointment. But uh, for proper off-roading thing, if you want uh, proper slushy uh, terrain, if you're riding on, then uh, there's nothing wrong in expecting more grip. Yeah, then again, this is not an MX bike, so yeah. you cannot really build an all-purpose bike all the time. But so I would say it is a decent tire. It's a pretty yeah. good tire. Good it's side of decent yeah. tire. Next thing is build quality. Uh, somebody dropped this bike yesterday while testing, and then today we're riding it. Although we fixed it. There's a lot of rattles that is going on in the front. Uh, the front fairing, basically. Fairing? Yeah. yeah, the fairing. Yeah. Okay, it's not a lot. Let me not just exaggerate anything here. But it, there's a fair amount of yeah. rattle that is going on yes. in the front. Yeah. So, the build quality is decent. It is not really bad like the previous gens. <laughs> yeah, but uh, it can still be improved. So, pretty decent. Yeah. Pretty I decent, pretty yeah. decent, yeah. I mean, it's not the level of the Japanese yet, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Can then, that. But then good improvement, Royal Enfield, good improvement. Yep. Coming to the mirror of this bike, I think they look like a last minute fitment. They do not really complement the design of this bike. Something wrong with it, that's what I feel. Even the build quality, the plastic is quite different from the bike itself. So this was looks like a last moment addition. And yep. functionality wise also, I would wish they were more wider. I would wish their mirrors were around here rather than being here so because this is giving me my arms like in the mirrors i can see more of my arms which is still thin though i don't have huge biceps like bounces but still they are visible in this mirrors so that needs a little bit of improvement i wish there were different mirrors are stock mirrors uh, as far as the showroom guys go i don't think they are the stock mirrors 
but uh, what they told me is that uh, they have a lot of accessories coming up so i think there are a few different types of mirrors there might be a few different types of mirrors coming out a lot of people had a lot of concerns about the carburetor on this motorcycle and that it is not an fi unit and the royal enfield tested the carb on this motorcycle from 0 feet to 12 feet now everybody is concerned whether this can go up in the himalayas in ladakh so let me tell you what will happen if you go take this to khardungla which is about 17000 odd feet not 18000 17000 odd feet is actually khardungla height what will happen is you'll just lose a little bit of power i think it will still go it will not die down on you you can also take it to marsmikla which is about 18000 odd feet which is the highest point motorable road i think you can do that it will just lose a little bit of power don't worry about it the carb is just fine however if you're going to ask me how to take a himalayan or an everest summit looks department there's a good looker actually uh but i must admit it takes some time to getting used to the looks cuz uh the first time you look at it it might not be appealing but then it slowly grows on you okay i have a little different opinion the first okay. time i saw this bike i actually fell in love with it because i saw the white color and it was so minimalistic now i'm a short rider like 53 and when i look at bikes like gs 1200 or tiger 800 i feel intimidated because it is pretty huge and it almost looks like the bike is calling come here boy let's ride let's fall and uh, let's kill you <laughs> right but this is almost like inviting me to ride it is slimmer it is not very huge and once you take off the center stand it is when you sit on it it is pretty reachable for me yeah. it's it's pretty simple to look at however it has all the elements of the 1980 style adventure tourers right if you look at the old africa twin yeah. the 750 old africa twin then it is that friendly to look at that is what i feel so Looking at the white, I pretty much fell in love with it. With its looks, for the first time. This is what I call as an entry-level adventure tourer. As I was looking for the Minx 300i for quite yes. some time, I was trying to talk to the company to get myself a Minx 300i, which a lot of people don't know. I don't know how many people, but then I think this is a solid alternative to Minx. I would probably stop dreaming about, stop having bad dreams about Minx now, and start having some. Awesome dreams about Himalayan. However, can I pocket it at 1.8 lakhs? No, because I do not have the money. However, I'll be very happy if my friends like this, all the Royal Enfield guys, give me a bike, and I would be glad to ride this around. What do you say? So here we have an adventure tourer, pretty affordable adventure tourer from Royal Enfield. But what exactly is adventure? For some people, it is taking off a weekend and going on to a short ride. for some people it is doing hooliganism on the streets for some people it is ktk golden quadrilaterals doing bun burners saddle shows and for me at least or for people like me it is about riding cross country in india going to neighboring countries and maybe someday riding around the world on a motorcycle so that kind of adventure do you yeah. think this bike pans across i think it pans across for the kinds of adventure there is and it's a pretty decent bike pretty good bike i would say from royal enfield and my money is on this it's a pretty good bike if you guys have any questions let me know in the comments below we go check out go green motors in gachipoli because they provided me with this bike since you guys commented you guys wanted a longer awesomer extreme off road ride go green provided us with the bikes and we are truly thankful to them wait wait Did you know that this whole video was shot twice over two days? I had to reject the first one and do it again because I screwed up the first one. So if you want to see those screw ups and see exclusive behind the scenes of how I shoot my videos, then all you have to do is click that share and share it on Facebook. Once this video crosses 50,000 views, I will upload all the crazy raw fun we had. testing the royal and feel himalayan so what are you waiting for share it right away not happening to anybody else wow <laughs> that is exclusive what how far no 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 <laughs> i keep forgetting and don't forget to subscribe because i make videos every week
follow me on facebook and instagram and sayonara signing off i'm hungry see ya bye